I'm Michael Lavalley from Killer Paint. In my video, uh, The Secrets of True Fire, I mentioned that we were going to be designing our own True Fire templates, and here they are. They come in three different sizes and three different model styles. Um, Wildfire, Inferno, and Diablo. These templates all have a unique shape uh, to help you paint True Fire. Um, these are all designed by me because of the shapes that I was looking for to paint True Fire. I, I just couldn't find them in other templates that I had used, so I came up with my own. With these three templates, you, you can paint just about anything you want with uh, True Fire. You want to paint a slow burning fire, a fast rapid rolling fire, or um, a, just a wildfire. You can create any effect with the help of these templates. These templates are not designed for you to just put down and spray and there you have fire. These are shapes that you're going to need to create fire. Um, one thing that's really cool about these templates is they, they are positive and negative sides. You can either use a template as one singular piece or separate them. There's little connectors in here. Just separate them and you can get the positive side and the negative side, thus giving you, um, with the three different sizes and three different um, versions of the, the template, you actually get 18 templates, um, which is pretty, pretty handy. Um, if you notice, uh, there's a lot of different type of shapes here. You got a long swooping arc here. Inside here, you get these big, long, whippy curls. Um, and this one here is more of a slow rolling uh, um, template. Um, I'm pretty excited about these. I'm pretty proud to uh, be working with our tool. Um, with these new products and uh, I want to show you how to use them now in the, in the video. One thing that's really nice too with the packaging that comes with the, the video, you also get my own personal um, collection of True Fire reference, Real Fire photographs that I took myself that I used to create um, True Fire. On the back of the packaging there's also a bunch of uh, jobs that I had done in the past that show you how I use True Fire on different vehicles either boats and helicopters and trucks and cars and hot rods and motorcycles. So everything you need to know about True Fire is going to be on this DVD, how to use these templates, and you also got your own line of um, collection of True Fire reference. So keep the packaging to refer back to when you're painting this stuff. Okay, we're going to put this stuff away. I'm going to show you how to separate these templates um, and show you how to paint True Fire using the brand new R-Tool True Fire templates from Killer Paint. As I mentioned before, the freehand shields come in three different sizes. You got the small, medium, and large, and they're labeled uh, A for the large, B for the medium size, and C for the small ones. I did this for, for the simple fact that I like these shapes, but if I have a big stencil, I can't use this giant stencil on, say, a, a motorcycle helmet or a, um, a little RC toy or um, you know, just any one of my, a motorcycle tank. So I'll save the smaller ones for the smaller projects, the medium sized one for the medium sized projects, and the big dog here for um, giant projects like boats and helicopters and tractor trailers where you need a big giant shield. Because you don't want to use this shield to, to do big fire on a big project, it just wouldn't look right. Uh, and also you wouldn't want to use the bigger shield on a little project because it would, the fire would be too big. So you need to paint the fire um, relative to the size of the project you're working on. So three, three different sizes in each one of the, um, the versions of the shields help you out in any project that you could ever come up against uh, when trying to paint this true fire. So these are, these are really handy. And like I said, these come apart, and I'll show you how to take these apart in a second, so you have a positive and a negative side. So you, can, you have a lot more shapes on here than what you see. Some people would just want to use the shield by itself and just use the, the outside shape, or they want to pull apart and utilize all these other little cool shapes that we got in here. Okay, now you got your True Fire templates here. I'm gonna show you how to separate them so you can get both sides. You can either use a, an X-Acto knife with a sharp blade, or you can use a single edge razor blade, whatever you prefer to use. Um, they're connected by just some very little tiny connectors in here. So all you gotta do is stick the blade through and just kind of pop them down like that. There's a few of them on here, so you may want to just make sure you get them all. It's pretty easy. Okay. There you go. I think I got them all. 
then here now you can separate the two into two separate um, stencils. Now you see they look totally different now. You can use this edge or you can use the inside edge. So you can use it as a positive mass or a negative mass. Same thing with the outside edge. Or you can leave them together and just use it as one unique shape. So they actually there's three different shapes. You got the outside shape, then you got this unique shape, and you have this one here too. So you get a lot more bang for your buck with these templates like this. Also included in here, I put in some little burning ember uh, holes and some small flame holes. Some people can't freehand really easy, so I put those in there so you can just spray through them and then put a little glow liner on them. Now remember, these shields are not meant to spray down and spray that shape and get a flame lick. You're supposed to use these edges to um, get your curved edges in your flames, and I'll show you how to do that uh, coming up here in a minute. But you do that to, with all the all the shields, and you you'll get uh, a bunch of different ones here. Let me just do Diablo real quick. Show you what that one looks like. And just pick it up and see where the connector is. I really like these things. Um, they've changed the look of my fire drastically because now I've got the shapes that I've been looking for forever. I had to make do with what I had before, but I knew what I wanted, but I just couldn't find it. So we came up with these, and now we have the exact shapes that I've been looking for forever to uh, create my true fire. So here you go. Here's another set. Okay, so you got now you're not, you shouldn't use this area like this negative space. You could if you wanted to, but it would look too much like a, just a spray and shoot stencil. Like I said, I designed these to use the positive and negative sh uh, shapes. Okay, so here I'll call this one Diablo because it looks like a little devil face there, with his horns. All right, the first step to this fire um, is to paint a loose uh, rendition of what you're looking for. Use your reference shots, kind of paint what you see. Uh, we paint the stuff backwards. So the stuff we're painting off, painting first is going to be the stuff that's going to be in the very far background. It's not very detailed. Um, it's not supposed to be detailed. But you want to start off with a good foundation or a good road map, like I, I, I call it. You can see some shapes similar to our freehand shield that we're going to build on later on. So that's your first step, is you want to go through your whole project with your first color, lay in a loose road map of the way you want your fire to go. If you want. If the, the vehicle that you're working on will tell, pretty much tell you how you want it done. If it's a low, racy drag car, you want this fire to look fast and ripping. If it's a, um, a big old box truck, you know, maybe for a welder or something, you want something that's maybe not so fast moving because of the shape of the vehicle. It will look odd if you had something, some fire on there that looked really fast when the, the vehicle obviously doesn't go very fast. So. Um, so gear your type of fire to the type of vehicle that you're working on. My second step on this, uh, how to paint this fire is um, I put some candy red over the original step. So now comes the freehand shields. I'm going to use a couple different ones on here. I'm going to try to use each one to show you some different effects, uh, uh, different looks with each one of these. So we're going to start off with wildfire. We're going to start off with the right hand side of it. Um, uh, the B, you know, wildfire, uh, the B, we're using the, the medium size one. Um, so, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take these shapes that I've already rough laid out and now I'm going to refine them. So, if you remember the saying, dark to light, loose to tight, okay? We start off with our colors being darker and get progressively lighter, and we also go tighter and tighter. And that's where these shields come in. This is how the how the flame will get tighter. Now, if you see what I've got here, I've got this kind of shape that I've already painted down. Now, I'm going to take the freehand shield, and I'm going to spray up against it. I'm going to let I'm going to let the uh, the overspray kind of blow into the flame. But you see what I'm doing? I'm not spraying that all down. And oh, there it is. There's the flame shape. Okay. What it is is it's the very sharp edge of the flame. Um, and then there's a soft edge. Now, what I'll do is I'll look at different shapes of the shield, like this little corner right here. Say if I want this p 
piece of this flame to kind of look like it's a little um, point coming off there. So I'll use this corner, or you can even turn them around backwards too, go like this. You get that corner there and let it blend right in there like that. All right, so here's a nice sharp edge and here's another nice sharp edge, but you see how it blends into a nice soft little edge right there? That gives it sort of a smoke looking uh, effect. You don't want to make a complete sharp edge all the way around. It's not very realistic looking. So what I'll do is I'll take this shield and I'll kind of find that shape there. And then this shape right here kind of reminds me of this shape that we have on, on the wildfire. Kind of hit that there. And maybe I'll put this one right up against that and kind of get that shape there. Now one thing you want to be careful of is um, like what I just did right here where um, I had the shield like this and when I sprayed this or when it was up here I had a little overspray and I got sort of a, you know, an overspray of the, the, the shield when I, when I painted up here. What you want to do is if that does happen make it into something else. Go like this, you know, kind of like, kind of cover it up, make it look like it's part of your design. One thing you do not want to do is use the same shape over and over and over and over and over and over again. Otherwise, what you're going to get is you're going to get something that looks like a bunch of, uh, you know, the little plastic tops for um, like soda cans, the little rings. That's what this is going to look like. It looks like you laid up a bunch of these things all over the place. So take this one, put it down for now. Grab a different one, maybe the inf maybe the Inferno where that one was wildfire, um, and then see this big hole right here. Well, this matches that shape just about right. Okay. Now what I've done too is I've taped up the little um, ember holes, so when you spray on there, you don't end up blowing through there and getting those little ember shapes because I'm not ready for those right now. <clears throat> okay. So now I'm going to take the shape right here and put it right up against right up against the first one that I did so I get a nice long skinny little lick kind of like connecting that piece to that piece now look at these before you spray them down you may find the shape is not quite right there but maybe that's the shape you want and here's another thing too remember I told you about the positive and negative shapes so say I want um, I want this to look like a hole that the fire is blowing out of. See, now there's like a dark edge right here. Now this looks like some fire that's um, glowing behind this. It almost makes this look like a shadow, okay? Now you can't really paint shadows with fire because you're painting light, but you're an artist and you have artistic license and you have to kind of fool the eye. So that's one way of doing it. Instead of painting black down, just put the, uh, the negative side down and spray it out like that. You can always come over it again later on like this and make it look like make it look like the fire is actually going over that dark shape right there. Okay? You want to use some freehand stuff too, not depend solely on these shields uh, to create the fire, but use them as a, a, a helpful guide. Okay? Here's another thing too. If I spray this here like this, I may end up getting that shape in the way. So you can just take this and fold it over. Hold it like that, okay? And then do some freehand stuff in there too because you want some soft edges too. There's a little ember sort of look, okay? Continually, continually build on what you've got. <clears throat> I want to take a second here and, and mention this airbrush that I'm using. This is Iwata's, um, it's a prototype from Iwata. It's the HPCS basically the same brush that I've always used except it, I've asked them to, to, to design this thing with a bigger cup to allow me to paint these fire jobs without having to um, change paint as often. Um, I don't like using bottles. I like using a gravity feed cup 
uh, airbrush because I just sometimes I just want to put a couple of drops in. I don't want to have to mix up a whole bottle of paint. It's just personal preference on my end, but um, this added little half inch of, of cup makes a world of difference when it comes to um, uh, time saving um, when I'm painting a, a fire job. So um, I can't wait till these come out on the market and um, try it. I, I'm sure you really like this brush. Uh, it's a workhorse and uh, it'll make your life a lot easier. So it's a new uh, Iwata Eclipse HPCS. I don't know what the name of it's going to be yet, but it's just it's got the larger cup size on the top, um, and it's some one of my favorite brushes. Here we got pretty good um, third layer going on right here. Now I want to show you really quickly how um, there's two ways of doing these little burning embers. You can freehand them by just maybe doing a little spot and a little ziggle, little wiggle like that, you know, with a little glow line around it. Or if you don't feel comfortable doing that, then you can take, let's see, let's take this inferno one here. You can do the same thing by just going, you can hold it slightly away from the surface, spray through it like that, make a little spot and do that. So you got the same thing. You can also make them change direction too by just flipping it over. A little one here. It's not really, uh, really necessary to use it, but it's a nice little handy tool if you're in a hurry and you just want to zip, 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 throw some on there. All right, like I mentioned before, you can use these things separately or, or as one unit. What I like to do is I like to have two sets so I can have this whole entire shape um, and then one separated. But what I'll do is I'll take and I'll take some scotch tape or some masking tape and I'll just tape over um, the holes here so I don't get any blow through. Now you want to do the same thing with the separation too. Just take some tape and just cover up these and that way you have this whole shape by itself. And sometimes you may you may want to use this whole entire shape whereas if you separated it like you know separated that off you wouldn't have this complete shape like that. Um, same thing with here or say like here on, on the Inferno, okay? You got this really nice sweeping arc right here. Whereas if you separated it, it would be cut short. All right, so here, here you've seen me, uh, I've taped up the uh, separation lines. So when I spray up against this thing, I won't have a little tiny little line creeping through on my paint. Um, <clears throat> so like I said, I like to have a couple of sets of these so I can utilize the whole shield as, as opposed to just using either side. Um, one thing too I want to mention that when you separate these you want to, you know the little tabs that are holding it together, you may want to take a little piece of sand, sandpaper or take the edge of the blade and kind of like knock down that little edge because there's going to be a little point from where you've separated that off and you will notice it uh, in your paint, um, in your designs you'll see that little little kind of a tip that's sticking up right there you may want to just kind of like scrape it off make sure you get get the little connector bars out of there to avoid any problems so now I've what I've done is I've gone through and I've hit what we've done already and pushed it back with my candy color now you can see how this layer here was tighter than than the first layer we put down and it's also uh, a little bit brighter also okay so the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go to my yellow <clears throat> now here I've taken the left hand side of Diablo and um, I'm gonna use it to pull some long sweeping arcs and I'm actually going to bridge um, one section to another um, by using this shield here. It's a good idea to use a bunch of the different ones and not use the same template for the whole paint job. Otherwise, you're going to end up with those repetitive shapes I was talking about and it's going to look fake. It's not going to look anywhere near as natural. Okay, so <clears throat> here we are. We've got the, um, the left hand side of Diablo. And what I want to do is I want to connect this one with this one here um, with a, some, some yellow paint. Now you don't want your, you don't want your paint to, to um, completely cover up what's underneath there because when you clear coat this stuff you're going to see all the different layers. In my True Fire, The Secrets of True Fire video it shows you exactly how to um, lay these colors down in the, in the correct sequence uh, with my secret, secret color recipe that I came up with. Um, for this super realistic fire. But the, the purpose for this video is to show you how I use these templates. 
Again, you don't want to rely totally on the templates, otherwise you're going to get too much of a fake looking uh, uh, result with your fire. These are just a tool to help you create your fire. They're not a, a, a cure-all, you know, instant spray down. Here we go. And I'll show you here, I'm going to put this down and show you why you don't do this. Um, and then I'll fix it, okay? So if you took this template right here, this looks like a pretty cool looking flame job. If you went like this and just sprayed it like that, it looks like a template, okay? But if you took it and sprayed that like that, you can also just kind of like do a little soft edge with it, come back in, do a little more soft, connect this one with that one, you know? Because you got to have that smoky look. You can't just have all hard edges. See, to me, that looks too cookie cutterish. You know, where I'm starting to do these, there's a hard edge here with a soft edge, a hard edge with a soft edge. Sometimes what I'll do is I'll do just one hard edge and then two soft edges to give that fire look like it's it, the radius of the fire is really sharp and it's the the gas burning off is kind of soft and just kind of blends off into the background. It gives a way more realistic look than just kind of trying to spray these down like this. So I'm going to come back and I'll fix this with another layer. I'll kind of cover it up with another layer later on. But what I want to do is I want to build on what we already have. See that hard edge right there? And I kind of want to just maybe hit that one like that. You're going to want to do a lot of freehand stuff also. Basically, all I'm doing is I'm pumping up what I've already put down. Here's another thing you can do with these things, too. You don't have to hold them directly down on the surface all the time. If you take this thing in and just kind of hold it, you might want to support it by bending it a little bit. Yeah, let me just find a better one to do that with. Just bend it a little bit and hold it away from the surface about, I don't know, not quite a half an inch. And then spray up against it like that. You still get the shape but it's a soft edge. It's not like putting it right down and getting that hard edge. So I'll do it again over here. I'll turn it over and I'll hold it away from the, the surface a little bit, spray up against it. So it's a little bit softer look. There's lots of different ways you can, you can play with these things. And then what I'll do is I'll kind of fog in an area like that because I don't want them all to look like chunk, 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 like, like cards laid on top of each other. I want it to look like um, different layers, but I also want to fog in between um, so you can see that back layer. I don't know if you can see it on the camera, but when this is cleared, you're going to be able to see that very first layer that's behind here kind of showing up through this screen of yellow. Um, and it'll give a nice soft look to it, but you'll also be able to see the depth so you know you'll see like there's something behind there. It's like all these different layers that we're building up, when we're done, it's gonna look like you can stick your finger right down in there and it'll look like it's this deep. It's not a stencil that you put down, there's true fire. You use this to build true fire. Um, all the different shapes that I came up with uh, will help you build the, the fire that you're looking for. You still gotta be an artist, you still gotta have to paint, okay? This is not just a quickie, sticky stencil that you spray down and, and get a shape. So you just use this to, to help yourself um, build this, the, the true fire um, effect, okay? In 25 years of custom paint work, um, I haven't come up with an effect like this that has been as popular around the world as this true fire effect. So get the, the, uh, the true fire, uh, the secrets of true fire video that'll show you all the secrets on how to paint this stuff this and this companion DVD that you're watching now uh, together will arm you with the tools you need to just um, go um, rock the world with your custom paint. It's best in your best interest to learn how to do this, um, do it well, use the right tools, and go out there and just make a ton of money and have fun doing it. All right, now I've gone in and after I've laid in that last uh, uh, bit of yellow, I've gone in with some candy orange and I've tinted over all that. 
So now we've put yet another layer on. Now I'm gonna come back with the yellow again, take the same shields, and now I'm just gonna build on what I've got. And here's the, here's the point where you can hide some things that you don't want, like, like this little lick that I showed you before that I didn't like. Well, if I don't like it, I'll just cover it. Again, don't use the shields completely, but just, you know, you're gonna need them almost, almost on every lick, you're gonna wanna use it a little bit, you know? Um, and like I said, you wanna try not to use the same shield over and over and over again to avoid uh, repeating the shapes too much. So what I'll do is I'll use, I use this piece here of wildfire for a little bit here and there. Do some freehand work. And then jump to another template. Another thing I do too is I don't try to repeat the same shape over and over and over again or just build up different colors on the same lick. I wanna kinda of crisscross them. And like I said, in, in the Secrets of Two Fire DVD, I go through all these steps in depth. Um, and I tell you about little tricks, tips and tricks of how to uh, bridge one, one lick to another one, how to um, uh, get a lot of the, the realistic colors and the exact combination to uh, to do it in, but like I said, in this DVD, we're we're really trying to show you how to use these freehand templates. And remember too, you can flip them around upside down. You know, just because the writing goes this way doesn't mean that that's the way the template goes. You may want to try it this way or try it backwards. You know and then use this edge. Kind of flip them around. And once you use these enough, you're gonna you're gonna know that you're gonna know the edges of every one of these things. You're gonna go, okay, I'm gonna go from here, and then in the back of your head you're gonna go, okay, and the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna flip it over and I'm gonna get the back side of it like that. Okay. So it's just gonna take a little while to learn how to use them. And another thing too, once you use these enough, when you go to do that very first step where it's all freehand, you're gonna remember this shape and you'll just freehand that shape. And then you'll come back in later on and actually use the, the, the template and go ahead and crispen it up. Um, so once you learn these, these template shapes, um, you're gonna be able to build your fire a lot faster because you already have a good foundation when you lay down the first couple of, of layers. Now here I'm going to take um, the left hand side of the medium, the B Inferno. I've been using the medium ones for this fire because that's pretty much the size that I would do on something this size, you know. So I kind of keep it all the same, same template. You can go to the bigger ones and the smaller ones to get little smaller looks of fire. I mean, just be creative. You know, you have the, you have the tools, now use them. Now, if you look at any of my fire that I've done before, before I had these templates, um, I had to deal with a lot of shapes that really weren't um, the, the, the shapes that I was looking for. That's why I created these shapes. And so now, when you look at my fire now, you're going to see it's a lot rollier and it's got a lot more points and a lot more swoops. Where before, the templates I used were more round or um, I'd have one template for just a, a, a large sweep um, and then I had another one for a little rounded effect and then another one for maybe a little pointier effect, but they never had them all in the same template. And that's why I designed all these. It's got all the shapes that I'm looking for. Um, let me grab another one here. 
Okay, now, see, I've taken the large Inferno to get that big sweep. That's what I'm saying, you know, you can use all of them. You may just need this one here just for, just for, uh, you know, one of the bigger areas, you know. Now see what I just did? I kind of made this sort of fire lick looking piece there, outlined it. Now I'm finding the corresponding edge to the shield. See how using these shields so much, I know that these shapes are on here. So look at that, how that almost fits perfectly right there. And they just kind of just blow it off like that. Okay, then you can use this one for right in here. Sometimes it's just a little portion of it you want to use, you know? Then you may want to just use the rounded side to make it look like it's rolling back that way. Just learn the shapes of these shields, play with them. Um, you know, what you want to do is you want to avoid using the pointy edges like this. I made this just for this round edge, not for that edge right there, because the fire would never make a right angle like that. It's always uh, some kind of an organic shape. So you want to try to avoid using that point there and that point there. Just use this shape and that shape there, or maybe the inside shape on that one. Again, look, see? Just by painting. I knew that shape was on there. You just take that shape right there. And then go boom. And you may ask, well, why don't you just put that down and put that paint it there? Well, because I don't know exactly how I want to paint it until I actually draw it out. I look at the whole piece and I say, well, it needs a shape sort of like that. And then I'll find the corresponding edge to the freehand shield. And paint it on there. Okay, what I've done now, um, right before this last step here, I've taken some candy yellow and just toned back that yellow back. I actually brightened it all up um, with this candy yellow. It intensified the yellow, intensified the orange, the other steps that are underneath. Now I've taken a uh, mixture of white and the, and the yellow, and I'm putting in my little hot spots, kind of going back in and refining all the little areas that I've, I've already worked on to tighten it up even more. Now remember I told you about actually um, making a making the fire look like it's got a glow. Take the shield, put it down. Now right there, right there where the fire gets really tight together, that means the gas is burning brighter right there because it's, it's concentrated right there. So then I'll just kind of do a little fogged in area like that right over it and it just when that's clear and that's uh, out in the sunlight it's going to actually look like that is a piece of real fire glowing in front of you just like a, a candle flame see how i use that the sharp edge but then everything else soft it gives a real nice crisp edge where the flame curves over and then a nice soft edge where it, it sort of dissipates. There you go, guys. That's it. True Fire using our tools new True Fire Shields from Killer Paint. Go out there and play with some fire. Light them up and have fun with it.